calling me the co-chair, but we've got about uh, 15 diehard volunteers that have done this for 13 years. But the, the way it started, I had, um, I had just moved up here to White County on a permanent basis. And uh, Bill Sutton Jr., who is the other co-chairman of it, at the time was in the banking business, and uh, he was the president of United Way that year. And he asked me if I would come over and uh, help him raise some money for United West. I said, what do you want me to do? And he said, uh, well, we'd like to, uh, we got a golf tournament and we'd like to have you come over there and uh, play golf and we're going to auction you off. The highest bidder will uh, get, to, get to play with you. And I said, uh, well, I'll be, glad to, I'll be glad to do that. I said, I don't know who wants to play golf with me. At the time, I wasn't even a golfer. I mean, I was just, I, well, I golf, but I was like a hacker. So uh, they put me out to bid, and I'm standing here in front of everybody in the golf course. It was really kind of embarrassing, but I was the only celebrity, quote unquote, there. And I've got these buck teeth, and wouldn't you know it, a, a gentleman named Bill Thomas, who owns a dental laboratory here in Cleveland, Georgia, bid $800 to play golf with me. And I said, number one, this guy's crazy. <laughs> Spending $800 to play golf with me. And number two, I said, you know, I don't know how we're going to win because I'm not that good. Well, anyway, uh, after about the fourth hole, uh, we were having a good time. And the local, uh, the paper here in White County comes out once a week. And the, the, the local uh, uh, sports writer was following us around. And I made a comment. I said, you know, you should make this a total celebrity tournament. And you could really do well and, 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 uh, and make some money with it. And, uh, and how are we going to do that? I said, well, I've been involved in celebrity tournaments. Before I moved up here, I ran the Major League Alumni Tournament uh, in Atlanta for the Major League Alumni Association. I, uh, I ran it uh, with a guy named Craig Skoke, who'll be here, pitch for the Braves. Ran it for uh, 19 years. And I said, I, I've got some connections. Uh, the Major League Alumni Association and the NFL Alumni Association, we, we, we kind of know each other, we're reciprocal. I don't know if you've interviewed uh, Dewey McLean yet or not, but well, I hooked up with Dewey. And Dewey says, yeah, I'll get you some guys. And, and he's, Dewey's been here every year. He and his wife have been here every year. And so it went from that to, uh, I know this guy, I know that guy, I know this lady Olympian, I know that guy. And so we've got a pretty good flavor of former, uh, you know, NFL, NFL, uh, Major League Baseball guys, NBA guys, uh, uh, Olympians uh, that come here. We have, um, we've had hockey players here before. Tom Lysiak was going to be here this year. He used to play for the, the Atlanta Flames. And uh, Tom's battling uh, uh, cancer, and he's, uh, he's had a bone marrow transplant, so he can't, he can't play, but uh, we're praying for him and uh, hoping the best. And, uh, so that's how we got going, and, and um, the, the second year, the, which was the first year we had a total celebrity tournament, we had 36 celebrities here. And now uh, we have, if the celebrities do not reply in time to the invitation that, we, that I send out, we got to put them on a waiting list. And uh, one of the secrets of the success of this tournament, because a tournament like this, for what all we do for the two or three days that you're here, um, if you had this tournament in metropolitan Atlanta, uh, the cost would probably be triple uh, to get a spot in the tournament. So uh, it's, it's, it's a huge deal up here in, in North Georgia. It's the biggest fundraiser of its kind, and I'm proud to be a part of it. But there's a lot of people involved. I mean, the, the hotel we're sitting in right here for, the, for 13 years, they have donated a room for a celebrity and his, and his, and his wife or his guest every single year. Next door at Big Daddy's uh, uh, Tavern and Restaurant, uh, they've donated the food and did the reception dinner every night for uh, every night for 13 years. Unicoi State Park the same way, the golf course the same way. It's just been, uh, uh, it's been a really great experience. And the, the good part about it is United Way has uh, uh, 18 different agencies up here that benefit from the proceeds that we raise. And so it affects, uh, the, the, it benefits and affects an awful lot of people. You know, we have uh, uh, caring and sharing. We have uh, uh, Habitat for Humanity, uh, charities like that. We have uh, Battered Women. We have uh, the Rape Center, uh, you name it. Uh, they're among those, those, thir those uh, 18 agencies that benefit from it. So could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you used to do? 
I, I played uh, in the NBA for eight years. I played with the Hawks, the Clippers, and the Bucks. And I finished my career back with the Hawks. And I worked in the, in the front office with the Hawks for a while. And I, I run a basketball school for kids where I teach kids how to, you know, the fundamental schools about, about playing basketball. Because kids now, they, they, the skill level is a little different than it used to be. The fundamentals are, are totally different. Now the kids just want to run and jump and shoot three-point shots and dunk the ball. <laughs> so they forget about, about the fundamentals. So I'm trying to, trying to teach them more fundamentals. Well, I retired from the sport of Team Handball. And Team Handball is kind of like indoor soccer with your hands. Um, I was a goalkeeper. And I competed in about seven years in that sport. It uh, took me around the world. Prior to that, I was playing basketball at the University of Massachusetts level. And um, my athletic director, he was the one that introduced me to the sport I had never seen and tried out for it. And they asked me to start training. And as soon as I graduated, that's what I did. I played 11 years in the NBA. And then I coached, I was a head coach in the NBA for 18 years on six different teams. What, uh, what team were you the head coach for? I was the head coach at uh, Miami was my last job. I was the head coach of Chicago Bulls. I coached Michael Jordan his rookie year. And I was uh, in, in the ABA and the N NBA. I was New, New Jersey and New York. They, we came from the ABA into the uh, NBA. For three years in the ABA, I coached Dr. J. And we had two championships. And then I coached Washington. I coached Philadelphia. I was a player coach of Philadelphia. So it was a lot of, lot of teams. Uh, I played uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. I uh, came here in 1976. Uh, uh, they traded me in 81 to Green Bay, which I didn't want to go. It was pretty cold. Um, and I've always lived in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and now I'm a state legislator uh, for House District 100. So you can, if you don't like one side of me, you can go to the other side. Well, I mean, of course, I played running back with the Falcons. Uh, I went to University of Tennessee. I got a degree in uh, logistics and uh, played six years uh, for the Falcons. Drafted out of college by the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, and we played the Falcons on a Friday during the preseason. Following Wednesday, I was traded to the Falcons. And uh, came down and had six good years. And that's when I went to work for Norfolk Southern Railroad. I uh, started out as a management trainee. Uh, went up through their management uh, process and uh, worked for it for 28 years and retired in uh, September 2012. So now I play golf three days a week and uh, other four days, whatever the wife decides I need to do, that's about where I'm at. Well, I used to be a Major League Baseball player and I played for 11 years in the Major Leagues and uh, was one of those uh, uh, jack of all trades, master of none kind of guys. I was a utility ball player. I uh, played for the Cincinnati Reds, and then I got traded here to the and played for the Braves for four years. When I was playing with Cincinnati, uh, we were world champions and, and um, arguably one of the greatest uh, teams ever put together were the Cincinnati Reds in the 70s. We ca they called us the Big Red Machine. And uh, my first manager of the Big Red Machine, Dave Bristol, he'll be a part of this tournament. And uh, we've had a couple other Reds uh, be here uh, before in the past. When I got traded to the Braves, uh, I was a regular shortstop for one year, and then um, uh, they made me a utility player again. And uh, after my career as a player ended, I was a broadcaster for the Braves on um, WTBS uh, and radio. Did that for two years, got fired from that job. I've been fired for most everything I've ever done. Uh, but you just keep on plugging away. That's good advice for you folks out there. Just never give up. It, God's always got a plan and everything will work out. So uh, after my playing career was over, I got involved in the Major League Alumni Association. And I served on the board of directors there for about 20 years. And then I was named chairman of the board of the Major League Alumni Marketing Arm, which is a, a for-profit arm of the 501c3 alumni charity. Basically what we do is we raise monies through events like this and other fundraising events, clinics and things like that, where the proceeds come back and they're, and they're distributed to people in need and former players who uh, are in need. How did you find out about this term? Uh, you know, uh, back in the old days, a lot of the old Falcons and, and uh, uh, the baseball players, back we all played on the same field. See, I played at Old Fulton County Stadium. 
the Braves played in Fulton County Stadium, and we were a whole lot closer. So Daryl was an old Brave, so make a long story short, so when he said he wanted to do a sports tournament, uh, at that time I was the president of the, uh, of the former pro football players of Georgia, the NFL players. And he said, do I want to make it sports oriented? I want to bring in football players, basketball players. So I said, Daryl, so that's why he's got a lot of football players is because when you know we got involved years ago and we give a lot of our time. That's kind of what we do, Brock, uh, as, as former players. We try to give a lot of our time. I learned it from, actually from Bob Reinhardt, who was the, who's been playing up here for several years. I play golf with Bob now and then. And he asked me what I'd like to come here, and then I talked to Daryl Cheney. And I was here last year, and we had such a wonderful time, my wife and I. It's a great, great thing for United Way. And it's just a pleasure for me. I come up to Helen quite often, in fact. I live in Atlanta, and my wife and I like to come up here, October Fest and other times. And to come up during the tournament, it just it was great last year, and hopefully the weather holds up this year. Um, Dewey McLean, a, a friend of mine who used to play with the Falcons, Dewey told me about it. And then I met Daryl Cheney, and Daryl invited me up here to come up and, uh, and, and join the festivities up, up here. And I like it. It's, it's a little, good little getaway for a couple of days. A friend of mine recommended that um, I can come and play, and um, got invited, of course. And uh, it was just history after that. It's a great charity. A friend of mine, uh, Olympic gold medal winner by the name of Mel Pender, uh, had played several years and uh, you know, said give Daryl a call and see if he had an open spot. And, and plus it's for United Way. You know, I've always been a contributor to United Way uh, in the past, so I thought it was a good opportunity to continue that and to meet some new people. And... So what does it mean to give back to charity? It means a lot. Um, it's helping people, uh, people that you don't even know that this can help. So yeah, it means a lot to me to help the charity. Anytime you can play for a charity, you know, you, you're giving back to the community. And that's what a lot of guys don't do. They got to understand, you know, you come from a place and it's good to give back and show the community that, that you like to be involved with what they do and also helping kids. Well, you look at myself, I've been very fortunate, you know, to be able to play in the NBA for 11 years and be involved with the NBA for over 30 years. Uh, I'm very fortunate that, you know, I've got a lot of breaks in my career. You know, you can go very quickly out of the league. I, was, I lasted a long time, and I wasn't a great player or a great coach, but I lasted a long time. And uh, to be able to give a little back to the people that su have supported us and to such a great charity, I I'm really pleased to be here. You know, it's, it's one of the things is that a lot was given to us, so therefore, why can't we try to give them things back? I mean, it's, you know, we all, you know, I consider ourselves role models. I consider ourselves uh, community-oriented folks. So. Uh, you know, my thing of it, let's, let's help them push their way up. Uh, as, I always, as we always said back in old days, I got more time than we got money. Because I played back in the old days and $15,000 a year wasn't a lot of money. So I got a lot of time, but not a lot of money. It means a whole lot. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm the oldest of six kids, single parent family, and had not people helped me in all phases of my life. Uh, I probably still be in Kannapolis, you know, retired from the textile mill. And uh, so by way of meeting people, getting an opportunity, got a chance to go to college, uh, got a degree, and uh, played sports after that. So it was, it was all attributed to help and guidance and, and support that I got you know, during those years. Well, you know, it, it, if, if you... Uh if you've got a if you've got a heart and a soul, it's it's very meaningful. It's uh, it's nice to know uh, when you walk down the streets of your community that when there is an organization that that needs, uh, whether it be your time and your talent or your money, um, you know you're helping them out. That's a that's a that's a good feeling to walk around. I don't really understand how uh, anybody, not only not only former professional athletes, how anybody can walk around saying that. You know, I don't do anything for my community. I mean, you know, what's, what's your purpose in life anyway? You know, we're all put here to help other people out. So that's what we do here. This is a, this is a part of it.